Hello everyone and welcome back to Asian Agastro channel dedicated to Age Sigma and in this video it's going to be my Flesh Eater Core list building video which is my second list building video on this channel as part of the new series because of course the Beast of Chaos list building was the first episode at the end of their series which was really sort of a trial and error and again this one admittedly is going to be a little bit trial and error so if you think there can be any improvements again as always, let me know down below in the comments so I can improve the content for you guys. So again, like the Beast of Chaos video, there's going to be three lists in this video, which I think provides plenty of variety without there being just too many for the sake of there being too many. The idea of these lists are, like I've said before, they're not going to be the most competitive lists. Are they going to have a competitive edge? Of course, they're going to be aimed for you to try and win your games, but they're certainly not going to be net lists, anything like that, because really I personally don't see those lists as being very fun to play. You may think differently and that's absolutely fine, but for me that's something I wouldn't enjoy. So the idea of these lists is that they're fun to play and they're something hopefully a little bit different. We've got three different types here like I've mentioned. So the first one is going to be all about terror guys and how we can maximize those because you can't talk about fleshy courts without talking about terror guys no matter how far away you try and stay away from the net lists. The second one is going to be about Crypt Flares, and the third one is going to have a kind of a big focus on Crypt Horrors, which is a bit interesting because Crypt Horrors is often a unit that is quite um, neglected in a Flesh of Courts purely because when you compare it to what else you can build in its box, Crypt Flares, Crypt Flares always just seem to be a bit better, but the reason I did a Crypt Horror list be a little bit different and to see what we can do with them if you really want to run them. So the first list with no further ado that we're going to look at is going to be called the Feast Day and this is like I said about the Terror Geist. So as you can see on your screen we have got the list to our left so apologies if you're watching this on a small screen you may struggle to read it a little bit let me know but I will be reading everything out so don't you worry there. And then on the right we have basically my summary strengths and weaknesses what the army is made for. So what we're going to do, we're going to read through the list first and then we're going to talk about how you would play it. And firstly what I'd also like to say is this is kind of my go-to list for like competitiveness with my Flesh Eater Court army. So with no further ado, let's see what it is. So of course Allegiance Flesh Eater Courts. It's Grand Court. It's not going to have one. It's actually going to have a Delusion instead. And obviously the Delusion is going to be the Feast Day. Hence why that's the name of this list. So what are we going to have? Firstly looking at the leaders. We are going to have a Abhorrent Arch Region of course. And he is going to have the Command Trait Dark Wizardry. Which gives him plus one to cast and plus one to unbind. He's going to have the artifact the Dermal Robe. Which is going to give him plus one to cast and plus one to unbind. So you can see how we're stacking that already. And then he is going to pick a spell from the Law of Madness, which if you aren't aware is the Flesh Eater Cult Law you get from their battle tome. And that spell is going to be Spectral Host. And that's going to be the spell that you put on a unit that can't fly and now it can, but if it could already fly, i.e. a Terror Geist, it can now run and charge. Also, if you cast it on a 10 or more, including modifiers, you get to pick a whole three units instead of one. So that is lovely. So then moving on to our next leader. It's going to be an Abhorrent Ghoul King on a Royal Terror Geist. So his Law of Madness spell is going to be Blood Feast. Essentially it's a way for you to be able to do mortal wounds to your enemy. And for you to heal those mortal wounds dealt to yourself to keep that important abhorrent ghoul king on terror geist alive essentially how it works is that you pick an enemy unit within range you pick a fleshy a court unit within range that of course can be the same model who is casting it you do d3 mortal wounds to the enemy and then you heal those wounds dealt to the fleshy a court unit you have picked if you cast it on a 10 or more you do d6 mortal wounds to the enemy and heal those d6 instead and the other quick thing to mention about that is actually the mortal wounds they take of course not just the the d6 you roll because if it was against a chaos warrior unit for example they could save against those mortal wounds with their chaos rune shield I believe they're called and then you could also use it to bring back ghouls and stuff as well as you'll see but that's not really going to be the point of it in this list and then the last thing to say about Abhor and ghoul king on royal terror guys number one 
is he has got the mount trait, the Gruesome Bite, which is the mount trait you have to take when you take a Terror Geist, because it lets you re-roll its more attack, which of course is the one and only famous more attack where for every six you get to hit, that's a flat six mortal wounds to the enemy instead of normal damage. I don't need to explain that's why you pick it, you should already know this. Right, okay, and then Abhorrent Ghoul King on Royal Terror Geist number two. So, the only thing different about this guy is he hasn't got the gruesome bite and he's got a different spell. So, he has got the Monstrous Vigor. Essentially, you pick a flesh of core monster within range and then you refer to its damage table as if it hasn't taken any damage. So, it's good for um, if you're Terror Geist or a zombie dragon we also have on this list, which we'll get to in a moment has taken sufficient amount of wounds so that it's really struggling, but you really need it to get across the board fast, as an example. Put the spell on it, helps it with its movement to get there, but it also means it's going to help its combat effectiveness as well. So it can be a very useful late game spell. But again, the uh, standard spell the um, Abhorrent Ghoul King Royal Tergos has is pretty good. Unholy Vitality it essentially gives um, Fleshy a court unit within range a 5-up death save. They will no longer get the 6-up death save or the Deathless Courtier save on top of that because that's changed in the latest General's Handbook but a 5-up is better than a 6-up anyway. So the last leader we have got is an Abhorrent Ghoul King on a Royal Zombie Dragon so a little bit different to the norm there and his Law of Madness spell is the Bone Storm which is essentially a way for you to do one mortal wound to enemy units within range. It, it's just that he's not going to be casting that spell unless he has to do some damage output via magic. His own spell, which is to reroll wounds, is the reason he is in this list. So we will not be um, using him for that spell unless he needs to. Okay, and then uh, the rest of the list is very quick. So battle line, essentially, three times ten minimum size units of crypt goals. For our battle line and then the only other unit we've got is a corpse car so this is an ally the reason for the corpse car is to give your casters of which you have four in this list plus one to cast because they will have the unholy lodestone which is very useful in the fleshier court army as your spells in fleshier courts are generally very good downside not really inherently ways to buff your casting unless you take artifacts allies etc so that's why we've got the corpse cart in there and he's only 80 points so he he definitely earns his keep from my experience and then uh, the uh, other things we have in this list is we actually have a bell in vortex this is going to be for the abhorrent arch regent to cast to really buff his magic potential we've already covered why he's getting you know pluses to cast with his artifacts and command trait this is only going to help with that and then we have a extra command point because this is fleshy courts and extra command points are always welcomed. And with that, we have a total of 1,990 points out of 2,000. And we have a extra command point, like I've mentioned, allies of 80 points, and a total of 85 wounds. And just in case I haven't mentioned it, the uh, Grand Court uh, Delusion of the Feast Day, the reason behind that is essentially it allows you to use Feed and Frenzy once per turn for free without spending a command point that's huge because that's not once per battle round that's not once only in your turn every battle round that is in your turn and your opponent's turn so for example what i often do is my apparent ghoul king on royal terror guys number one with a gruesome bite he will always attack twice as long as he is alive and as long as he is in combat he will always attack immediately after the first time he attacks as a staple which is massive feeding frenzy is already really powerful the fact that you can just make one of your terror guys do it for free makes it really, really, really strong. Okay, so now that we've looked through the list, what is the point of this list? So it's very monster elite, obviously. It's combat aggressive, of course, and it's high magic. So I want to break that down a little bit. And it's also eight drops as well, in case you're interested in that, but I'm not really too bothered. So the idea behind, firstly, the magic in this list we have got an abhorrent arch regent who let's say he gets his bell and vortex off because he should do because he's getting plus three to cast because he's getting plus two to cast from his um one from his command trait one from his artifact and then plus one for the corpse car he's getting plus three to cast 
He gets that bell and vortex off. He is then casting three spells a turn and an extra six inches to that range. And why is that important? Because I don't really see many people take the bell and vortex. So why would I take it? Purely because your terror guys are going to just run up the field and do as much damage as possible to the enemy. Unless you get Alpha Strike, of course. So because they're going to be too far forward for your standard 24 inch range, even if your abhorrent arch regent is trying to run after them, to make sure that he can always put the very, very, very important spell of Ferocious Hunger, which if you've played against Fleshy of Courts, you'll know that spell. If you play with Fleshy of Courts, of course you'll know that spell. And if you do not, you will soon know about it as soon as you fight them. Because Ferocious Hunger allows you to give a flesh ear court unit wholly within 24 inches of the caster an extra d3 attacks which is huge because like we talked about the terror guys he has some other good attacks but the more is the main one we're talking about so terror guys number one with the ghoul king on top is attacking twice in every turn we established that already so that is six attacks with the more if we can put d3 extra attacks on it and let's say you get the minimum which is one now that is eight attacks with the more or if we get an extra three attacks on that more which i have done before quite a few times you are now doing 12 attacks with that more re-rolling all failed hits every six you get to hit is six mortal wounds to the enemy unit you're attacking instead of normal damage that's absolutely huge and normally it's quite hard to, to guarantee giving extra attacks and stuff. But what you've done now is when your terror guys has run at the field, your abhorrent arch regent, who's on the barrel and vortex, has now got 30 inch bubble. Particularly if he's kind of like in the middle of the board, 30 inch bubble, which is absolutely massive to be able to find your terror guys or your zombie dragon if needed to put these extra attacks on to make it so much easier he's also getting plus three to cast so the big thing i can mention flesh of courts really powerful magic not the best magic casters you pretty much sort of that problem out even if you go against a um if you fight against you know i don't know an arcan he's getting standard plus two to cast standardly so that means that you're already an extra plus one casting compared to his unbinding and everything so Unless, obviously, of course, he can take Corpse Come or Sentinel. But you're giving yourself such a good foundation straight away. Also, his saving improves as well on the Bayon Vortex, so it makes him even better. If you're wondering, well, if he's on the Bayon Vortex, how can he be next to the Carnal Throne to be able to use that command point, you know, once per turn to bring something on without spending the command point? The measuring for um, distances for your Arch Regent now becomes the base of the um, Bayon Vortex. So... As long as you measure things up so when he casts it, he can set it up and still be within one inch of the um, throne. It just takes a little bit of measuring and stuff. You, you can make it work, particularly how you put down where the throne is. So yeah, it, it won't really be much of a problem. So he's there, and like I say, he's got Ferocious Hunger he wants to cast, but he's also got all his other spells. The ones that's going to, like I say, um, Special Host, to make a Terror Guys be able to run in charge. And I don't always just want to use a Terror Guys example, but it is, to be fair, the best example, especially in this list, that you'll be using it for. So that is your Abhorrent Arch Regent there on his, what I like to say, his base. He's going to be a, your base unit. Your Abhorrent Ghoul King on Royal Terror Guys. Both of them collectively are essentially going to be doing as much damage as possible to the enemy. Um, I think I've, I've pretty much covered that already. If you want more information on a Apparent Ghoul King on Royal Terror Guys, I've done a whole video about that one model. So you can go check that out for sure on the Flesh of Court playlist. But essentially, the, the only other thing to mention with them is you want to keep the one with the gruesome bite alive. That's the important one. That's why he's got that healing spell. So if anything, if you can, try and get the Abhorrent Ghoul King on Royal Terrorgeist to put um, Unholy Vitality onto it to be able to give it that 5-up death save opposed to the 6-up death save. So that's what you want to do. And then uh, what you also will be doing is, unless it's a very demanding situation on the table, you want to keep all your kid and power in one place. Unless you need to spread out, like I say. Because the Abhorrent Ghoul King on a Royal Zombie Dragon's job 
is to be in between the um, Royal Terror guys. Of course, not literally right in the middle between them, but if he has to be back, you want to capture both of them wholly within 16 inches of him. If you can, if you can't, just focus on the one with the gruesome bite or the one that you need to do damage that turn essentially. Because what the um, zombie dragon's point to do is the ghoul king on top can cast his spell, which is malefic hunger. This is the reason he is in the list. He's costing you an extra 20 points over a royal terror guys with a ghoul king on top of it. And a lot of people would put the extra terror guys in instead. But that spell is important because your terror guys are so effective anyway. They are arguably the most effective for its points monster in all of Age of Sigma. So the next question is obviously how can you make them better with Malefic Hunger? Because that allows you for units wholly within 16 inches of the zombie dragon with the Gulking on it to get re-rolls to wound. So now your Apple and Ghoul King on Royal Terror guys, with the Gruesome Bite, for example, is, let's just say he hasn't even got all those attacks stacked on it from the um, Arch Regent. Just flat out, he's got those three attacks, so it's more, as that's a prominent attack. Hitting on fours, re-roll and fails, only sixes to hit. Do the six more wounds, as mentioned. But if you fail and you think, oh, fuck, why haven't I done any more wounds? Right, when you go to wound in, for D6 attacks, you tend to always fail because it just makes it even more annoying. Now you're re-rolling those fails. So you're almost guaranteed to making the enemy have to do those save rolls at a minus two rend because that particular terror guy is re-rolling its hits and its to wounds. And that's with all of its attacks anyway. Because remember, even if you're just looking at the um, Ghoul King on top, we go, oh, five attacks, you know, minus one rend, one damage. It's not amazing, but it's... As soon as it's attacking twice, which it always will be, that is 10 attack. You know, it all stacks up. And if you can obviously buff extra attacks onto it, like I said, if you manage to put an extra three attack onto that Royal Terrorgeist, that's six attacks times that by two again, because it's attacking twice, that's 12 attacks with that more reroll and hits, reroll and wounds. And of course, this is also going to benefit the uh, Apparent Ghoul King on the Zombie Dragon itself because it's always going to be in range of itself and it's going to buff the other Royal Terror guys with the Ghoul King on top of it because as long as you can get the range and that is why I say to tightly pack it it's not always going to be as straightforward as that as the situation the table can be demanded in different ways and you may need to split up your force but always try and have the Apparent Ghoul King on Royal Zombie Dragon with at least one of the Terry guys, ideally the one with the gruesome bite. Don't have him on his own doing his own thing unless he has to, because he's there to be a buff piece. Otherwise, you might as well just brought an other apparent Ghoul King on Terry guys and saved you 20 points. Now, you may be thinking, well, you're relying on magic. How how can you be sure you're getting it off? Well, you're going to get another plus on the cast from the corpse car, as well as all your wizards. So the other two Ghoul Kings on Terry guys as well. As long as you keep the corpse cart in range. Corpse cart's not very fast, just bear that in mind, but it has got a big bubble of 18 inches. So it, it can easily be done. And that is really the main thing for this list, to be honest, because the battle line of Crypt Ghouls, what do they do? Hold objectives. That is their point. Maybe screen your terror guys or your zombie jack. They're not. They're obviously not going to. They are not what makes this army combat aggressive. You know, they are just there to do the basic job of holding objectives. Don't use them for anything else unless it's for them to die. So something better does not die. Okay. So the other thing to say, what's strong with this list is you have lots of summoning potential. So of course the Abhorrent Arch Region. Obviously, everyone knows that he can bring on 20 ghouls, which is 200 points worth of models with his summoning. So he can do that if you need to buff your um, model count for that certain game because you've got a very low model count in his army, really. So you've got him to do that. You've got your two terror guys. They can either bring on three flares each or they can bring on three crypt toys each. Now, Crit flares are generally going to be the better choice to go for, unless the enemy has got a really crap sage, for example, and you want high damage output. That's the only reason I'd go for the horrors, or if you don't have the models of flares. And um, you've got your 
zombie dragon, obviously, to um, bring on a courtier. So bring on the Vargolf. He's the best value for money, really, on that one. And what I would say is that doesn't mean you always have to go for that. Right, Arch Region always does those um, 20 crit goals because when I've played at a tournament and it's the, what is it called, like three places of power or something, the, or like um, Jordanity of Death, the objectives or battle plans that they're still around that all focus around heroes caption points. Then I would, with the Apple and region, I brought on a other Vargolf just to give the enemy an other hero to try and think about because if your um, standard units can't capture objectives, who gives a crap that you only have minimum battle line because they're not going to be needed. Then they can just screen, you know. So it gives you still versatility on what you can choose from. Don't feel like you always have to go with the 200 ghouls because it sounds best value for points. And... Um, yeah, so that's it really. I'll, I'll go through these strengths and weaknesses I'll put on in case I missed anything. So very heavy hitting. So, yep, goes without saying. I've already, I've talked about this long enough. This video has basically been explaining why Terror Geist is so powerful. Um, strong Mortal Wound output, again, from the uh, from the Moor, from the Terror Geist. Strong Magic output. Now, I've already talked about this because it's the, um, you know, the really buffs you'll get into your magic. And this army is very fast again because three of them are monstrosities of undead on leathery wings that can move 14 inches minimum before you start putting things like special hosts in them and then you have strong summoning like i say easy access to feeding frenzy like i say because literally your main abhorrent ghoul king on royal terror guys the gruesome bite will always be attacking twice as long as it's alive if it dies make the other one attack twice you know you can read all the zombie dragon all the ghouls if it comes near and down to it and there's a hero in range to make them do it because the reason why it's so good with the terror guys with the ghoul king on it because the ghoul king is the hero so always be in range of himself and then last thing to say is that you've got a chance of a triumph for this objective because you are 10 points down now it's not the biggest biggest chance because you're only 10 points down but some people like to always try and go for 2,000 points because it sounds like a pretty number. So you've got you've got a chance. And if you do get it, that re-roll, charge roll or whatever needed may really, really help you out. And then what have we got for our weaknesses? Because of course we have got some. So low model count. Yep, that's, uh, that's mentioned. Now it's a bit funny when I say low model count because someone could say like, oh, I've got, you know, like a uh, Beast Claw Raiders focused... Um, Ogre More Tribes list and it has you know half that model mount because you know in this technically in this list you have what 35 models but you know it's three 10 man units of ghouls which can die really easily so you, you know you really focus on your heroes in this list if your heroes go you, you've lost essentially um, hard to objectives again because of the low model count and then it suffers against heavy shooting from the um, enemy so this is something that I personally experienced. So essentially I was out of gaming for a little while and out of the tournament scene and stuff. And I got back into the tournament scene at um, Blood and Glory last year, I want to say. It seems like it wasn't that long ago. Probably about a year, nearly a year ago now. And um, I went 3-2 with this list. And bear in mind, I haven't really been playing properly for a while. So I was very happy of that. And um, the big problem this list had is when I lost was... First was against Skaven. And essentially, I, I found out what uh, Plague Monks did. Uh, but the second time when I lost was um, against another Skaven list, which was nothing but Storm Fiends with lots of guns. And I, I just got shot off the board before I could even get to the enemy. Which is it's an interesting dynamic, because I say it suffers against that. If the enemy gets all their shots off, yeah, you, you know, and you fail your saves, you are going to take so much damage and you you won't really be able to recover from it. But if the enemy fails their hits and they're shooting, they're really guard quite fucked. So, you know, it's it's a very early... It's a, the first turn or two is very deciding for this list is what I would say. Okay, so that is the feast day list. So that's the first list. Like I said, that's my go-to for competitiveness now. I'm sure a lot. Most people tend to run um, like um, Gristle Gore and put the main Terror Guys so they can in, especially just the raw Terror Guys because they're cheaper. But for me, I prefer this. I think it works better, and I hadn't seen anyone else use it before I did, which I'm happy with. So as I've 
explained a lot about this list. When we go into the other list, there will of course be certain um, units that are the same as this list. And I will not be going as as crazy as in depth explaining what that unit does because I feel I've I've talked about a certain list for about twenty five minutes, so I don't need to do the same depth of what I've just reviewed. So just bear that in mind. But like I say, if you want any more information on certain units, you can check out my Flesh Eater Court series, as it's the largest one on the whole of YouTube. Right. So going on to the next list. So this list is going to be the blister skin and this is going to be a bit of a focus on crit flares for this list. What I would say is as I'm reviewing these lists they probably do get less and less competitive as I go through but still just as fun. So again I'm going to go through the same format. I'm going to read through what we have on the left here in the list and then we're going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the army. Okay so Firstly, the Allegiant, obviously, Flesh Eater Courts. The Grand Court this time, as you can guess by the name of the list, is going to be the uh, Blister Skin, which is the one in the Realm of Light of Haish, and kind of aims towards a, a flare route to build your list around, I suppose. And then the Mortal Realm, to be honest, doesn't make a difference, but I've gone Haish because it's thematic. Okay, so leaders. Our general is going to be an Abhorrent Arch Regent, so he is going to have the command trait, the Hellish Orator. So these are again Blister Skin artifacts. That's when we start... You, the Grand Courts are great because you get extra benefits, but you do also get forced into taking certain artifacts and command traits. But to be fair, this command trait is pretty good because at the start of each of your turns in your start of your hero phase, roll a dice on a 4-up, you gain an extra command point, which Flesh Air Courts are one of the most hungry command point armies there are. So... That's not a bad thing. Okay, and then we have for his Law of Madness, Special Host. Again, that's one to make things uh, run in charge. They already fly, or if they don't fly, they get to be able to spread their wings a little bit. So, we have a next in the list is going to be the Abhorrent Ghoul King on Royal Terror Geist. Funny how he made it into this list. So, he is going to have the artifact Eye of Haish. So, this is the one you get the Blister Skin again. And what this one does is um, makes basically the enemy minus one to hit for himself and anyone wholly within six inches of him. So not a big range, and that's kind of why it's put on the um, Apparent Ghoul King or Terror Geist, because his base makes it the biggest range. But really, it's just because your, your enemy's going to try and kill this guy anyway. You might as well try and make it a bit harder for him. And um, yeah, that's and because he'll be up in front, they say he charges a shooting unit, but he doesn't kill it straight away. Then the shooting unit shoots him because it has to in the combat because, you know, what it's in combat with, the shooting rules. You might as well make it um, minus one to hit. And then for his uh, Law of Madness spell, he's got Monstrous Vigor, which I've explained. Basically makes the monster's damage table, look at it and make it look like it hasn't taken any damage for um, movement and attacks what have you so yeah that's useful for him and then the mount trait of course is the gruesome bite which i say is a re-rolls for hit rolls for the more attack which is the auto go for and then what do we have less for leaders we've just simply got two var golf courtiers and why have we got those because when we go into the battle line we have got a unit of nine crypt flares a unit of six crypt flares and a unit of ten crypt goals so the Vargolf courtiers are here because surely you just have so many, I think, keyword knight units in your army, essentially the um, crit flares, to be able to um, regenerate, bring them back once they've died. Because the enemy will try and kill them, probably, and they will probably throw a lot of hurt at them to try and wipe them up in one go. So if they haven't been wiped out in one go, you want to regen as much of them as possible. The Vargolf, why have I gone for those instead of just um, the... Infernal Courtier, which is the uh, Crit Flayer um, hero, who can bring them back as well, and it's 40 points cheaper each, purely just because the Vargolf is just so much more tougher. Um, but he's got a lesser save, he's got a 5 up save opposed to a 4 up save, but he's got more wounds and he can do so much more in combat. On I don't even care on paper, it doesn't, it doesn't maybe not look as strong, but the amount of damage I've had Vargolfs do is, is great. So that's why they're there. The reason why there's two is because the enemy will try and kill one of them. For sure, if you only had one of your lists, so you can't regen. But now um, you've got two. And to be honest, your Arch Regent could call in another one if needed. So 
it, it works quite well. The crit ghouls are purely there for their battle line for 100 points, and uh, I was running out of points. So that's why they are there. We then have, um, for our ending spells, command points, everything like that. We only have just one thing in that category, and that's going to be an extra command point, because again, command points are very important in this army. And uh, that brings us to a total of 1,980 points out of 2,000. An extra command point, like I mentioned, no allies, and 107 wounds. So, why have we focused so much on crit flares? Well, in this blister skin army, you get plus two to your movement. That's that's kind of a big thing what you're getting here. So now your crit flares move in 14 inches, which is huge. And this is before um, you put like any spells in them as for example if you were to put um special hosts in them now you're making them run and charge so you can really help the movement as well as you can put that on your apparent ghoul king on uh, raw terror guys as well like i mentioned before the good thing about this list is similar to the last one there is something to be honest i didn't really mention but i think i i talked about it for a long time but the main thing when i think with list building in Age of now is you have to have multiple threats in your army. There's no point now just having a one big Death Star unit that can just... Well, I say can, I mean it's the only thing that does all the damage and it is really powerful. Because um, there are so many more nerfs in this game now. And I'm going to say like the main one I've came across, and obviously it's not going to be every time you fight this, unless you just fight against the same army all the time, is going to be Bellacor. Because a better course ability, he can just shut something down for one or two turns. You know, and if you have one thing that does everything, can it shut down for one or two turns? It can be shut down for a third of the game. You know, it's just sort of like shrugging my shoulders now because, like, what, what, what are you gonna do? So you have to have multiple threats in your army. The biggest one here, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be the raw terror. People are gonna know what that does, especially the ghoul king on top of it. They're gonna want to kill it. But if they just focus everything on that, you've got nine crit flares. That that's not easy to take down, especially with the regen. And then you've got another, you know, six crit flares, which can be a bit more maneuverable because it's a bit smaller. Um, but you still obviously want to make sure it's all in range of the Vargov courtiers. And then you have the ten crit goals, which is just to sit on an objective. How I do run my like flare units, as I am a person that has many flare units, and I used to run them a lot. What, how I use them in the game is I do keep everything quite close together in flesh of course because it's important especially if you're going crypt forwards or flares or ghouls because you want to bring everything back there's no point unless it's completely necessary to send your six crypt flares to the left and your nine crypt flares to the right and then you either decide why, where the Vargol's going am I going to split them or am I going to send them in one direction to help one unit if you can keep them all together within within range it's not too hard because it's not wholly within 10 inches or the Vargolf, but just within 10 to bring stuff back. If you can do that, then you can help both of your units out at the same time, rather than essentially leaving one to die and not be able to regen. So you've got this. Um, the other thing I want to say about this list is I always used to run um, the Deadwatch Battalion, which was the Crypt Flare Battalion. And um, in the new book, I think it got a bit better as um, it got cheaper but essentially what it does now is you pick one of your crit flare units in this battalion and what you have in the battalion is three crit flare units and the infernal courtier the crit flare hero you pick one of those units and it gets to attack in your hero phase which i think sounds great it sounds really good but to be honest while i've been trying to build a list with the dead watch in and particularly when i was trying to do it for this video i it probably took me the the longest out of these three lists to come up with just because for a while now it's I've been trying to think what what the problem is why I can't put the dead watch in and because I used to do it all the time what it is is I used to have a ghoul king in my list instead of an arch region before the arch region came out obviously so the arch region is a lot more points than the ghoul king like comparatively it's like an extra 80 points now so it really makes on a knock and effect of what you can put in the battalion and what you can put into the list after you've squeezed the battalion in. So I think it's better going without the battalion, but I'd be interested to try and take Deadwatch at a later point. And if you guys are still taking Deadwatch, I'd be interested to hear how you're running it. Um, you can obviously not 
you can jumble things around so you can put it in here and stuff but for me I, I just didn't feel comfortable so this is this is why I came up with um, this list so anyway going through the summary and stuff what we've got is it's elite it's combat aggressive and regeneration so you will see some of these things are similar to the other summaries I've put but it's the same army at the end of the day it's just different list so the main difference here is the regeneration because the you can bring back so many crit flares to this list for those courtiers. You've got two Vargolfs. You can bring in another Vargolf courtier if you like, or whatever courtier you want to. But I do the Vargolf because it does all the um, all the jobs really. Um, yeah, so it's going to be hard unless your enemy really dedicates itself to wiping out a crit flare unit. And obviously the unit you know, six is each wipe out the unit nine. Um, they're they're going to struggle to um, to get rid of them and to deal with the terror ice as well. You're giving your enemy a lot of problems to deal with. Um, and this list has also got seven drops, so if you're interested in that. And then going to the strengths, it's very heavy hitting, obviously. Um, it's got a strong mortal wound output. And again, the uh, two tear guys list that we looked at just before is a strong mortal wound output. But this has got strong because we've got one tear guys, but also the crit flares. Every six they get to hit, there's one mortal wound to the enemy, which is big. So that's good. And um, they're very fast. And also this list has teleporting capability. Um, which is, like I mentioned, one of the things of the list is um, the blister skin. They get to add two inches to their movement. The other thing this list can do is it gets its command ability from blister skin. Which allows you to teleport one of your units nine inches away from the enemy. So essentially you teleport one unit and it sets up again outside nine inches away from the enemy. It's very generic compared to other abilities of the same yoke but it's it's a great it's a great tool to have in your box and it's something you might go you might forget about and suddenly go like oh, how am i going to get to that object of the enemy sort of you know like left behind you know like you're like four turns into the game you, you can't get there quick enough but you just go teleport something there boom enemy spot about that as well and then you can just quickly turn the game like that so it does happen um strong regeneration like i've mentioned chance of extra command points from the um, Archer region with the Hellish Orator. Uh, command trait, which I said, you know, start with your hero phase, roll a dice on a four up, extra command point. Biggest thing, have a cheat sheet. So this is something I've talked about before, where you, this, essentially what I was about to say is that you think about the things you need to do in every phase and you, you write it down or you type it and you just print it off or something and carry it with you so you don't forget important abilities that you need to remember. But to be honest, these days, just go on AOS Reminders and there's a lovely website and lovely people on that website who um, do all that work for you. You type your army list in there and they come up with everything. So remember those things because the amount of times I've gone into a hero phase with a list similar to this and got carried away and started doing magic straight away. Um, and then you go, oh, crap up you know i'm past the style of hero phase now i forgot to get the command point and the extra command you know like i said you're not got feast air anymore so you can't guarantee that that at point ghoul king on royal terror guys is always attacking twice so you really want to you know stay on top of generating as many command points you can especially how you know you can put it on the crit flares here as well to make them um, more effective and then you've also got a chance of a triumph which Again, it's not, not the biggest chance, but you're 20 points down from 2,000 this time rather than 10 points. So you've got a bit more chance. You know, you would beat the other list as an example. And then weaknesses. So we've got low model count again. Um, we've also got hard to hold objectives because of the low model count. And, um, and also, it's not really just the low model count. Your units are not defensive units. And part of the regen capabilities, which are good and are, do work defensively, they're not defensive units, you know, they're not liberators or anything. So it's just, you know, there's also that to bear in mind. Um, and also with this list, you've got uh, no help towards your um, casting of magic. Unlike the last one, where it was like just as much help as we could get practically. This list, there is none of that. So you, you are a bit risking it as well to try and get those extra attacks. But you know, to sacrifice that, we've got extra things in the list, haven't we? You know, it does change. Then the other thing I want to say is that you can't guarantee that your offensive units are always going to be within range for um, feeding frenzy, because your like in the last list, everything that wanted to do feeding frenzy was a hero, so it's always within range of itself to be able to do that command ability. Now, no, your crit flares won't always be. 
So it's just something you got to balance, and something you just you got to be a bit more on ball with your measuring game with a list like this, especially with the VAR golfs as well. Bringing back those models, if you accidentally leave a VAR golf just out of range to you know resurrect some crit flares, that's really going to hurt you. Like really going to hurt you. There's if there's things like um, when you're taking away models from a crit flare unit. And um, always take them away, unless for objective reasons. Always take them away, furthest ones away from the um, Vargolf. Even if that means that you have to take away the leader of the Crit Flare unit. Doesn't matter, you can bring them back next You know, next turn. Just make sure you're always in range of those Vargolfs. And something big that can um, happen is that you think you're on top of it, you're doing all your measuring, and then you go charging, and then you go crazy, and then suddenly your Crit Flares are... 15 inches away from your Vargolfs. And the enemy's done a lot of hurt to you, and it's your turn next, but there's nothing you can do about it. So, measuring is, is key in this list. As uh, Measuring is a big thing with Flesh Eater Courts, and, um, but this list is just more prominent with that rather than the um, Feast Day list that we looked at. And I think that's enough about this list, to be fair. I think we've covered um, points as well. Of course, if you've got any questions about either of these lists that you think I haven't covered or something, please ask me in the comments and I'll be more than happy to um, help you guys out as best I can. So then the last list, which I have simply called Horrors in Need. So like I mentioned, this is going to be focused around Crypt Horrors and seeing how at least I would make them work best I can because I do feel like they are the unit in Flesh Eater Courts that are not taken as much because Flesh Eater Courts is a very tough competition because essentially if you want to put anything in the army that is not either an Arch Regent or a Ghoul King on Terrorgeist you need a tough argument <laughs> So that's why Horrors do not see much action if you want to be as competitive as you can. But let's see how we can make them work in this list at least. So going through the list on the left, Allegiance of course, Flesh Eater Courts, Grand Court, we haven't got one, instead we've got a Court of Delusion and it's the same as the first list we looked at. So remember this allows you to do Feed and Frenzy once per turn, so in your turn and your opponent's turn, for free, without spending a command point. Okay, so what we've got in this list. So leaders, we have firstly an Abhorrent Arch Regent, so he is going to be the general. He is again going to have the same command trait and artifacts first list, so he's got Dark Witch Tree and the Dermal Robes. He's getting plus two to cast from there. Law of Madness, Special Host, so the running charge one, or to make him fly. We then also have a Abhorrent Arch Regent again, number two. And his Law of Madness is Deranged Transformation. Now this is a spell that I believe we have not covered so far. So Deranged Transformation is a spell that allows you to pick a Flesh Eater Court unit in your army that does not have a wound characteristic above 6. So what that means is um, per model in that unit it doesn't have more than 6 wounds. So for example, if you were to pick a... Sank will get to a unit of nine Crypt Horrors. You can pick that unit. It's not collectively the wounds, it's just for each model. For example, you can't pick a Terragast. What this spell does is that unit can add its wounds characteristic to its movement. So Crypt Horrors move seven inches. Now you can plus four inches of course of their wounds to their movement. So now movement 11. So that's how it works there. But you can't make a Terra Geist move, you know, 28 inches. So that's why there is a cap. So we all understand. So that is his spell. And then the last leader we have is an Abhorrent Ghoul King on Royal Zombie Dragon. So if you weren't looking at the screen, you probably were expecting me to say Terra Geist instead. So we've got a Zombie Dragon. And I'll tell you for why. So he's got the mount trait, the horribly resilient. So that is simply just one that allows you for your... Ghoul King on top with the Dragon who heals D3 wounds in your hero phases. He now heals a flat 3 instead, just because you want to keep this guy alive. And we'll get to why we have him in the list in a moment, because what we've got for the rest of the list is Battle Line. Simply three 10 man units of Ghouls for Battle Line purposes and to hold and... I was going to say take objectives, but mainly just to, just to hold them. 
And then we have four other units, like I said, a unit of nine Cryptorus. And then we have a Corpse Car as an ally. And we've actually got two Morgas Harbingers as an ally with uh, Spirit Hellbirds. And then we've got for uh, Endless Spells and Extra Command Points and stuff, we have the Extra Command Point for the Fleshy Court purposes, really, that's all. And then we have a Bale and Vortex. So then we have a total of 1970 points out of 2000, an extra command point, like I said, allies of 270 points, and wounds of 112. So let's break down the point of this list. So, your Abhorrent Arch Regent, his purpose, the first one, the general, is to do exactly or what the Abhorrent Arch region did in the first list we looked at, goes in Bell and Bortic, sets up a base, buffs his magic. That is his purpose in this list, as it was in the first list we looked at. And he also brings on 20 ghouls, or a Vargolf, or free man unit of Crypt Flares, or Horrors, or like I said, the ghouls. Really, whatever is needed. Probably the ghouls. Okay, and then the second Abhorrent Archer region, essentially he's there for his magic as well, and from to run up with your um, rest of your army as well, just in case things get in range of the Bell in Vortex. In case they get outside of that range, you don't really want your guy to come off his Bell in Vortex, walk a little bit further, and then try and cast his spells. So we've got a second one. I'm not going to lie, his other reason is so he can bring on a... Vargolf, because you have to get at least one of the Abhorrent Arch Regents to bring on a Vargolf. I know I said for the first Arch Regent, doesn't matter what he brings on, as long as one of them brings on a Vargolf, because you have no um, courtiers in this army to bring back your Cryptorus, which is one of your heavy damage digging in units, and will just take so much damage so quickly if it can't uh, regen. Um, so we got that, and then the Abhorrent Ghoul King on Royal Zombie Dragon. He is there purely for the same reason he was there in the first list, but instead of buffing the Terror Guys with those rerolls to wound, he'll be buffing your Crypt Horrors. Because if we go through the rest of the list, like I said, the, the three Crypt Ghouls, the three 10-man units, they're there just to hold objective. We've already talked about that. The 9-man unit of Crypt Horrors, they are a unit that can do huge damage potential. Because they each get three attacks each, and the leader of the unit gets four, obviously. Standard. They hit on fours, which is, you know, can't always guarantee to get that four. However, if they're wholly within 18 inches of a abhorrent, so this is the arch region or ghoul king, which is more than more than achievable in most cases, they get to reroll all failed hit rolls. Boom, lovely. So if they're in range of that abhorrent ghoul king on a royal zombie dragon they're re-rolling those hit rolls and then if they're within a similar range of his malefic hunger spell which he's getting a plus one to cast via the corpse cart for the bit of help there he's going to make those crypt horrors re-roll failed wound rolls so that's hitting on fours re-rolling all fails wounded on threes re-rolling as well any sixes you get to wound do free damage if not the damage is damage too Again, you can put the Archer Regent spell on them to give them an extra D3 attack. So you can see how this is stacking up. So that is their purpose. If you go against a Horde unit here, you can do insane amount of damage to them. If you go against something without a really good save, you can do huge damage to that unit. Because for every save they fail, it's at least two damage. And you can really chuck bucket loads of four saves upon them because of all the rerolls you're getting here. Um, of course, the um, Apparent Ghoul King on a Zombie Dragon can do some damage as well. So, why have we got the Morgas Harbingers in this list, especially only Unit 2? It's because you can ally with Death Lords, so we can put in the Morgas Harbingers. And what this list really struggles from, for its combat effectiveness anyway, is um, high rent. So, Cryptoids, like I said, great, huge damage output they can do. No rend. So I've done it when you're against, um, I don't know, Storm Plus Army with a top, say, row and one. You just can't do anything to them. You you just bounce off. And I know that's a very extreme example, but even if you go against things with three up saves, four up saves even, it can be very frustrating if you make the enemy do, I don't know, like 10 save rolls and they've got a four up save 
and they fail like one, which I know is good rolling, but it can be. That that was your that was your moment to do that damage, and it and it's just gone. That could have been you know like twenty damage, and now it's two. So you need some rends to deal with good saving units that your opponent has. Um, so that's why they're there. And then, obviously, the command point is, like I said, everyone wants that, and the vortex is to help with the base magic. So, looking at the summary we've got this army, so again, it's a lead, and that is a as a theme for each one of these lists we've done. I haven't done a mass crypt ghoul list, but that's just because it's not really my style. I most I've ran is like a unit of four. It's I don't I like the bigger models essentially. That's my thing. It's not like I don't like the look of crypt ghouls. I just I like the idea of like a you know the delusioned knights. I don't want the men at arms. I want the real Pegasus knights and the you know knights of the realm and everything. So the next thing this uh, has got in summary is combat aggressive, of course, high magic, like for the same reason of the first list, and we have got um, for nine drops of this army, so very quite high on the drops here. But at this point, we're just trying things out. We're not focused on everything being watertight. And then the strengths we've got is high damage output um, with easy rerolls of the horrors, like I've explained. We've got strong magic, like I said. We also have strong summoning, which I have explained as well, because I really cannot say enough. You need one, at least one of the Arch Regents to summon a courtier to help you crypt horrors. That's done. Other than that, do what you like. And then we have a good chance of a triumph because we are 30 points down. So we have we have got a decent chance we are getting that, and it could be re-rolling the uh, charge could be whatever it is it basically it's saving you having to spend a command point at a certain point in this um this game and then we have a for weaknesses we've got a lowish model count i said lowish this time and not low because we have got a few crypt goals and apart from the first list when we had a few crypt goals we also got nine crypt horrors you know so we it's not just these big one model Killers going around. Um, hard to objectives for the same reasons. No real mortal wound output. And that's kind of the first time we've seen this. Of course, there's going to be a couple examples where you could do more wounds via magic and stuff, but there's not really any mortal wound, especially compared to like a heavy crit flare list or a heavy um, telegraph list. And then not a lot of rend, hence why the Morgas are lined in. And uh, at the end, no obligatory terror guys in this list because we're very fleshy a core army like i've already kind of explained this video it always has to have at least one terror guys ideally to be honest with terror guys if i'm i'm if i'm got a competitive head on and i'm building a list i'm like i really need at least two in here like and it's trying to get away from that i don't gonna lie to you are you better spending those 390 points that you spend on Cryptorus, you know, spend another 30 points, put another Terrorgeist. Would that make for more competitive? Probably yes, but it's to try and see what we can do with the other stuff more than just one model. So um, that that's the reason for that. The other thing I just wanted to say, what well, I haven't put on the list, apologies, is the spell for the um, Zombie Dragon. To be honest, just, just, just give it what you want. I would probably give it the... Blood Feast, which was featured on one of the Terror Guys, I believe, from the first list, um, just to keep him alive a bit longer. You, it's the one you do more wins to the enemy and you can heal those wins back via that spell. So that's what I would do. And to be honest, with that, that's came to the um, to the end of the review. I know it's basically been quicker review in each of the lists the further I go along. That's because the first list I basically explained everything in the first few courts and then you 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 tweak it for each of the other following lists. But what I want to say, guys, is um, please let me know your thoughts about this new series. As I say, um, this, again, can be a long series. There's as many different lists ideas I can do. So I want to try and get it right as early as I possibly can in terms of format. And if you guys like it, this video has nearly gone on for an hour. And... Please let me know, that's that's a good link. I can't always guarantee it'll be the same because different armies will have more things to talk about, less things to talk about. As for example, Flesh Air Courts is an army that I collect, which means I can talk about all my past experience with them, i.e. I talk about them for longer. I imagine this video has gone on for quite a bit longer than the Beasts of Chaos one. As an example, 
Um, but yeah, so let me know your thoughts down below. If you've got certain lists you run, cool, that'd be great to hear about them as well. If you've got any questions, ask me down below, happy to help. The other thing I want to say is if you have enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, that subscribe button. It really massively helps the channel. You guys have been doing a fantastic job of that lately, as I've just explained in probably, I think it's my last video, the 3,000 subscribe one where over the moon with your support and please keep it up as it's really helping the channel to grow. The bigger the channel gets, essentially, the better the content gets. It's as simple as that, as you can probably see it evidentially through all my content as the um, time has gone on. What I also want to say is if you would like to support the channel a step further, I have got a Patreon, which is at the top of the description down below. There's a link. You can click it and it takes you to my Patreon. You obviously don't have to if you don't want to, but if you can just check it out, I'd really appreciate it. Anything like it from a dollar a month really helps me be able to continue my channel. And with that, I'd like to do a shout out. You can probably see them on the screen now of my current patrons. They do a fantastic job by supporting me purely because of their support i can continue to make videos to help you guys with your hobby if it wasn't for them i wouldn't be able to do it so like i say a massive shout out to all of them they do a fantastic job so guys with that i'm going to thank you very much for watching this video if you'd like to learn a little bit more about flesh eater courts i've also put a link to my playlist with them down in the description below and i know i said earlier in the video that's like the biggest playlist on um, youtube but Quite a modest person, it generally is. I have such a love for Flesh Eater Courts. I did a review for every single unit in that army, and it's my longest army review. I think I have around 60 hours worth of content or something for them. So please check that out if you love them as much as I do. But like I say, until next time, guys, remember to stay safe, hygienic, wash your hands, everything you can. And of course, remember, Nagash is all, and all is one in Nagash.